Okay, now, who here of all of the students we have with us can name all the, the people that descended to, to Jesus? Oh, come on, you can name some of them. I want to thank, before I get started, um, Lama and her family who put the beautiful display up for the Blessed Mother on her birthday. And it's interesting, we, we hear that long, long reading of all the lineage of, of Jesus and of St. Joseph and Mary and all of the, the saints before them. And I used to get bored when I'd hear those readings until I went into seminary and we started to study a little bit about it. And I thought about some of the names that are on there. The most fascinating, I think, is Ruth. My dad and mom used to go to the, to the doctors together, and there was this, um, this doctor there. It was a young man who was a born-again Christian, and he was really into studying the Bible. And every time my dad would go into the doctor, she would sit there and listen and like take notes. And he said, you're like Ruth. She said, what's that mean? He said, look it up in the Bible. Ruth was the great-grandmother of King David, who was obviously the one from whom Jesus was descended. He was called son of David. Ruth wasn't even Jewish. She was a Moabite. She married into a Jewish family. And she and her husband and her mother-in-law and her father-in-law left Israel to go to another country because there was a great drought. And while they were there, away from their country, their hometown, her father-in-law died, and so did her husband. So her mother-in-law, Naomi, and Ruth were there all by themselves. And Naomi went to go back to her home country, to Israel, hoping that one of her relatives would take care of her because she didn't have a job, had no way of providing for herself, and she was older. And she said, Ruth, you're free to go back to your own family and the, with the Moabites. They'll take care of you. She said, no, I will stay with you. She said, you're no longer bound to me. My, my son is, is dead. You're no longer bound to stay to this. And she said, you will always be my family, and your God will be my God. And she went with her and married into the family of Naomi. And she bore a son who bore a son who bore a son named King David. Each and every one of those names that's in that long, long list has a whole story behind them. It's all part of the story of, of God's people. And what it says in that second reading is that, that Jesus is the firstborn of many brothers and sisters. That means that each and every one of you have been adopted into the family through your baptism, through your confirmation, and certainly through the reception of the Eucharist that we'll receive in just a few minutes. And if you think about all of the stories that go behind all of the names in that book, it's amazing. Sometime, if you, if you haven't been confirmed yet, when you start looking for names for your confirmation, look at this list and start Googling their names to look up some of the amazing stories of all of these people. There's a, a line in the letter that St. Paul wrote to the Hebrews. It said, we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses that we should persevere in running the race that leads to heaven. Those witnesses are the saints. We think about all of the, the traits that they had, how Paul just persevered no matter what. And Peter, every time he, he fell and did something dumb, he, he apologized and asked for forgiveness and got up and started again. And of all of them, the Blessed Mother herself, who she was only 13 or 14 years old, and an angel appears to her, not just any angel, an archangel. She had to be terrified were it not for the fact that she loved God and knew God would always take care of her. She trusted. When that angel said, we want you to have a baby, and he'll be Emmanuel, He'll be the Messiah. And she said, be it done to me according to the Lord's will. And that simple yes led to the birth of Jesus Christ himself. Her whole life, she was one of those people that, 
There was that quiet witness working behind the scenes, supporting all of the apostles, letting them know that it'll be okay. Because after Jesus died and rose, she adopted all the rest of the apostles. It took care of them, just as she'll take care of each and every one of us. Each of us has a cross to bear in life. Each of us has a story. From the day you were born, and even before, God had a plan for every day of your life. A plan to build his kingdom here on earth. It starts with living our lives the way Mary did. Do you think Mary was jealous of other people? No. Do you think Mary was, was crabby when she was tired? No. Do you think Mary took toys from her brothers and sisters if she had any? No. She wouldn't have done that even if she had brothers and sisters. She was just filled with God's grace. And if we could learn to live that way, wouldn't it transform our families and our neighborhoods and our schools? Wouldn't it be a better place to live? It's a way to start building the kingdom. And it may not be a big thing to live our lives the way Mary did, the way Jesus wants us to live. It may not transform our nation overnight, but isn't it a great start to live our lives in the shadow of the Blessed Mother?